everybody and welcome to Two Weird Didn't Watch, the show where we make fun of movies that we have not seen, based on nothing but their weird descriptions. Happy holidays, I'm Brantley. And I'm Albert, and as Brantley has just indicated, we are plowing on through our stash of Christmas goodness, starting things off with the ever so festively named Christmas Incorporated. Okay, so... I just recently watched Monsters Incorporated again. So I'm getting like a combination of that, like Arthur Christmas and like Krampus all scrambled together in my brain right now. It's not fully formed, but it's there and I'm liking it. It really is just Arthur Christmas, right? But Krampus is there. Why is Krampus there? Because <laughs> I like Krampus. That's why he's on top of my tree right now. Okay. Okay. And I like that movie. In the approach to Christmas, currently unemployed Riley Vance of Exeter, New Hampshire is pounding the pavement in New York City. That's not New Hampshire. Go back home, bud. In the hope of finding that job before the holidays. The job of pounding the pavement? I guess. It's called construction, man. <laughs> it is somewhat male-dominated field, though, so that's why she's really trying to break in. Fair enough. So that she doesn't have to worry about it during what should be a happy time of year. This is just sad. This has really bummed me out now. This yes. is, yeah. It sucks to be unemployed, Brantley. It just, what what I, do you know? Yeah. Despite her college degree and professional experience, she got most of her business acumen from her home business online retailer father, whose knowledge about the business world is encyclopedic. So let's just recap. She has a college degree mm -hmm. and prior experience in professional retail type work i assume mm -hmm. not like stocking the shelves but actually like running something or at least being in the running of something right and she still can't find a job yeah this is way too real really huh? <laughs> it's not okay after being turned down at every turn primarily due to not having an ivy league degree wow lower standards also maybe not new york woman yeah like go somewhere else Go south. There's a lot of... I mean, maybe she's in a lease in her apartment. She can not leave, but No, she I meant, like, if she's in New Jersey, go to the crummier parts of New Jersey. After being turned down at every turn, primarily due to not having an Ivy League degree, Riley finally gets a break at an open interview process for the job as assistant to William Young, who has just taken over the reins of Young Incorporated from his recently deceased father, Thomas Young, the company founder. Okay. There was a lot of information on yeah. there that I don't think we needed. Like the names of everybody and where they live and where they're looking for work. Like you can condense some of that. Riley gets her foot in the door and is offered the job largely due to a misunderstanding. One that Riley wants to clear up immediately but doesn't due to being swept up in the moment. See, that's the information I would do better than just like how this guy became the leader of the company. Yes, like what is the misunderstanding? What was the moment she was swept up in? What's going on? I, I get that, you know, you want to get us to go watch the movie, not just tell us the whole plot. But like some things are being like emphasized that we don't really need to know. <laughs> yeah. And then a thing happened. Let me tell this guy's backstory. She plans to do so, that is cleared up the uh, yes. misunderstanding, after proving herself on what is to be her and William's first big assignment. No. No, you should. You were swept up in the moment and you realized it was a problem and you should have immediately corrected it. Yeah. That's the right, the right take. I was on her side for the, like, she wanted to correct it, but then she was in the moment, but... Now I'm kind of I like, think, you're lying. This is, this is, you're not in the moment anymore. You've decided I'm going to keep this. I mean, devil's going. advocate, she was jobless and maybe she wants to not immediately get fired. Yeah. Yeah. I understand her motivation. I do, but I don't agree with it. Anyway, the company's flagship toy factory in Dover, New Hampshire is struggling and William has decided to close it or come up with a different business model to keep it open and profitable yes he's decided to do one of those things Brantley he could either take a loss on a toy factory or come up with a different business model that would make him money 
Yes. We haven't decided which one of those things we I want to do yet. I think it's more... Again, playing devil's advocate with this entire description at this point. <laughs> or I guess Krampus is advocate. Anyways, he's like giving them a deadline, probably. It's like, look, we are like hemorrhaging money from this factory. We have to either close it or find something that works. But we're not going to let it keep going. So we have until probably Christmas to figure it out. Riley believes they should at least go to Dover to see if there are any ways to keep it afloat. You're going to see the Dover demon. Okay, is that different from the Jersey Devil? Yes. Really? Yes. Okay. One's in Jersey for one. The other one's in Dover. Also, they're described very differently. Oh, okay. I thought maybe they were just like nearby similar demons. I haven't heard of them. I mean, the Dover demon basically looks like one of the greys, but without a mouth. And you know how frogs have that little... Like, how they shove their feet up under them when they sit down. Mm -hmm. It's like a, against a tree like that. And some kids saw it in the woods and get like a picture of it and then ran away screaming because it's a cryptid in the modern day. The fact that like they said earlier, he was willing to try to figure out a way to keep it open and profitable, but he's not willing to go to New Hampshire to like actually look at the factory. I mean, he's running a whole company that clearly has multiple factories. I guess. Yeah. All of them making toys, possibly? Yeah. And the flagship one, which is the big one, but that's the one that's losing the money. And he just got the company, so. William, who realizes that there were much more qualified people in the company to take over the company than him, wants to place his own stamp on the company, yet live up to the trust that his father has placed in him by at least making that site visit to the factory and talking to the employees. Wait, so at first you're like, she's really putting the thumb screws on him, about not going to this factory, I was fully expecting him to be like, no, I'm uninterested, you go. And then she goes and saves Christmas, and no, he's like, I must make my impression on the company. I mean, yeah. Well, I, they, it just seems like it's, it's kind of... It's a family company, and he's got to, like, leave his mark, but he also wants to live up to his dad, who built the freaking thing. And then he flies to Australia and has a weird dream and decides not to shut it down. His dad built the company, so he is the second CEO of this company and he, I love that he's like I'm actually not the most competent person at no, this company like, there are people better at this job than I would be but dad get put me in charge and I'm not just gonna be like no I stepped down because I'm not the best because I can't do that because that's not how people work the fact of it being a toy factory and it being the Christmas season will not factor into William's decision as he readily admits that he has long lost the Christmas spirit. <laughs> I mean, I guess when you're rich, you just kind of stop being like, Christmas when I get stuff. It's just like, yep, I'm going to buy this thing. Now. Well, maybe adults mostly stop being excited about Christmas. I think especially if you're a rich person, you might start getting excited about the fact that you can help people around Christmas. Like, How many rich people have you met? They don't help people. They're, rich people are always patting themselves on the their back That's about their themselves. charity work. I, That's not for helping people. That doesn't count. I, I disagree. I don't think... I, I think that you have to judge the results, not the motives. And if they are actually giving money and having a good time while they're doing it, like, so be it. Mm. Oh, well, we're going to have to disagree on this one, apparently. Add it to the list. <laughs> <laughs> That's how friendship works, guys. Riley succeeding in this assignment is in jeopardy by Rebecca Neston. That okay sentence. I've got my eye on you for really bad construction. <laughs> a local Dover investigative journalist who is more concerned about breaking the big story than she is about any possible negative consequences for anyone else but her and her paper. See, this is going back to the misunderstanding that it feels like it's a big deal. Like, that's what's going to ruin all this. But I don't know what it is, and I have no context, so it's just like, why do we care about this lady? Well, yeah, what is she gonna going to report? That's It's going to be about something about her, because it's R Riley succeeding or failing and making him successful on their first assignment. Oh, so she's going to break the story that about the whatever the misunderstanding. Who is executive decision is not what she seems to be. Yes. I thought she was going to be like, they're thinking about closing down the toy factory and like people would go on strike or whatever. I mean, maybe, but then that would, I feel like the sense would say with like William succeeding in this or something. 
but it's just Riley. Okay, fair enough. So that's my take from this. But beyond her supportive parents rooting for Riley are Dover's mayor, Martin Keegan, who has finally found a good spot to be, who can see she has a good heart and the Christmas spirit, and a certain red-suited gentleman from the North Pole. So this is, a, I guess, a Hallmark movie where literal Santa Claus is a thing. Do you think that they're selling the toys to Santa Claus? Is the factory dying because he's stiffing them on prices? Was Santa his dad? Oh! <laughs> Santa anyway, so- Young. <laughs> Have you seen the new Netflix Christmas movie, uh... The one with uh, Kurt Russell? Yes. It's on my list. I haven't watched it yet. There are moments where he is doing the thing where he's Santa, and so he, like, knows what everybody wanted for Christmas, Mm -hmm. and he just sort of can produce that. But the thing is, and they do, they get this right. Like, real kids in real life want name brand stuff, but when Santa pulls the G.I. Joe out of his pocket, you're thinking... How? Magic. But then, like, did the real G.I. Joe company not make money on that because he gave it to them for free? Or did he have to pay licensing fees? Or does he does sort that of, come like... come up in the movie to the questions? No, 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 no. Because no, my don't. thought is he just magically made it, but he can only, like, make one at a time. <laughs> if he's pulling it out of his pocket. Well, he has elves that are live inside his bag. His bag's like a bag of holding. Oh, okay. And the factory's actually inside the bag. Like, you can go in the bag and That's get awesome. to the North Pole-ish. Or at least his office. So, yes. That they do cover in the movie. If Riley is able to overcome Rebecca's work, she may be able to save Christmas for Dover and bring the spirit back into William's life. Through the power of deception... And lying about things to get a job. I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. I I get that. And I haven't seen the movie, so I don't know what the setup is. Again, like, it's a misunderstanding, and it says she wants to clear it up. I don't know how, like, what the scale of how bad this thing is. Right, what is she telling them that she is? Like, what... What how... did they misunderstand from her that she honestly wants to fix, but doesn't want to get fired first? So she's like, I'll tell them after we get this fixed. So that implies it's not the biggest deal. But then this lady is like, I will un- unveil your secret. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to do research. We're going to find this out. By you the way, there's our white couple wearing green and red yep. on the cover. Mm-hmm. Although there, she's wearing the red and the green. He has like, oh no, he's got both. So he's got yeah, a but red. But they're more muted because he doesn't have the Christmas spirit. Right. It's a darker green and it's like a flannel with darker red in it. And then he's got like the gray scarf because, again, not super big on the spirit. We're going to figure this out. Okay. Frequently asked questions. What was she being blackmailed about? <laughs> I think that the people in the frequently asked questions actually watched the movie. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love the phrase on that Hollywood blue buds, blue bloods hate the Canuck film machine. <laughs> Where? There. Uh, oh, yes. Because it takes food off the table. Um, Cringeworthy and awful. One out of ten stars. Ten out of ten here. What did Fair have to say, though? Ten stars out to the movie, not for its results, but for its intentions. Aw. No, that's not how that works. I'm sorry, I thought it was, Al. (laughs) No, I said results are what matters. Oh, okay, fair enough. If they're like, first of all, I don't know of anybody who's like, I sure would like to feel good about myself, and that's why I'm giving, like, giving money to the homeless might make them feel good about themselves, but nobody, like, thinks it out like that. So I don't even know if that counts as intentions. You know what one of the most common phrases thrown around Christmas is, like, every year? It's the thought that counts. Well, that's just, like, all over the place. Yes. I'm not talking about, listen, I'm not talking about, like, if I thought about getting you a gift and it wasn't a great gift. I'm saying, like, if I went to try to feed the homeless and I actually fed some homeless people. Now, granted, probably they needed feeding all year round, so Mm -hmm. maybe I should just give some money and the people who were actually responsible for that could sort of spread that through. But, like, that would be a good thing to do, maybe. 
yeah. if you actually if the money actually went to feeding homeless people. I gotta find this. I'm no, okay. There is one six. I was gonna say there's not a lot of like middle scores. Is he like? eights tens and ones and twos. here's here's christmas reviewer again he has the same all caps things i have reviewed over 400 christmas movies and specials beware of bogus reviews some I love reviewers how only have one christmas review. by capitalizing it and putting a space after every letter okay including the s because it's in parentheses okay this says it's a he says will a case of mistaken identity ruin the whole plan okay so he thinks she's an entirely different person, which I don't know how he's doing things like putting her on the payroll or letting her get the company health insurance. I mean, she's an assistant. Maybe they don't give her insurance. Unfortunately, a hallmark dud. Oh, well. <laughs> I we, We're not... So he thinks that she's somebody that she's not. That's the best that we can come right. up with. There's only 13 reviews for this garbage. So some people say it's great. No, I'm saying like it wasn't even seen enough for people to have opinions. <laughs> I can say I love the idea of Christmas reviewer just going out of their way to review every Christmas movie ever made. <laughs> but like in all caps before every review, just being like, some people are liars. Because some people aren't experts on Christmas movies. They clearly are. They I might can't... have worked in the Canadian film industry. Look, I can't say that I've seen even 100 Christmas movies, and I love Christmas, and they've reviewed over 400. Not just seen, they've reviewed over 400. That well, is dedication to your craft. Finally, for this episode, we have Debbie Macomber's Dashing Through the Snow. Now, I don't know if Debbie Macomber is dashing through the snow, or if Debbie Macomber owns a store or something called Dashing Through the Snow, or if, like, there's only one movie DVD of this and it belongs to Debbie Macomer and she just lets people watch it. But that's the name of the movie. Okay. Is it the director? Okay, you know what? I'm being facetious. I actually do know the answer to this. <laughs> it's a, based on a book ah. of the same name by Debbie Macomer. Okay. You had to take the fun out of it, Bradley. I had take to reveal right that I out was of your sales, yeah. on it. <laughs> After I was just bringing down the hammer on what's her face earlier from being dishonest. <laughs> it's just before Christmas. Accurate. Ashley Harrison, who earns a living as a crafter, currently in Sacramento. What is she crafting? But I don't know, man. Craft sandwiches. But it's in Sacramento. Oh, okay. This is where she's living currently. She might not live there in the future. And she does. No, it's before Christmas. That's her. Uh, she may have lived home. somewhere in the past, but currently she's living in Sacramento. <laughs> At this point in time. And, but, who sells her wares at craft fairs and markets around the country? What does that mean? She doesn't only sell her crafts in Sacramento. What really. are the crafts? <laughs> you see, she I need them. to know. What is with Hallmark and mysterious descriptions? is heading back to her small hometown out south, outside of Seattle. Hey, Seattle. So, see, she's currently living in Sacramento. She's from Seattle. But she was from but Seattle. But she sells all around the country. <laughs> Something that she creates. We don't know. <laughs> uh, to be with her recently widowed mother. How did he die? Was it through crafts? Oh, by the way, I I'm sorry. I, I read that as if we we're recently mit widowed mother. Mother? <laughs> recently with a widowed mother was the end of the sentence. But no, that goes on to tell us that the recently wi widowed mother's name is Sally Harrison. And, and she goes to be with her for Christmas. Well, it's before Christmas, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that we needed to know her first and last name is what I'm saying. I would assume that her mom had the same last name as her. That's not yeah, always that's the case, point. but I would have assumed. She's. It is a Hallmark romance movie. Like it's Ashley Harrison and her mom Sally Harrison alone for Christmas for the first time. I also have never seen Sally spelled I E. Uh, it's not that uncommon. No, it's not. It's just I've never seen it that way. She will be making the trip alone as she is still reeling from the breakup about one year ago of her last relationship. So you're saying as last Christmas she gave someone her heart. And the very next day, he just gave it away. The very next day, Brentley, yes. And this year, to save her from tears, she's going to go visit mom. 
<laughs> That's a much more healthy reaction than the person in the last Christmas song who's just like, you can have me again. Anytime. We may have discussed this song before recording this episode. <laughs> we did, yes. <laughs> I didn't know it would be per- appropriate for the episode, though. Oh, I know. I wish that we were rolling when we were having that discussion, actually, but we didn't get to be. <laughs> I-, I do think it's been like a whole year, and knowing these movies, she's not that old. So, like, how long could this relationship have gone on that an entire year later she's still like, I'm not ready to get back in the game? She's been a high school boyfriend. I guess. I only dated my ex for a year, and I still miss her sometimes. Fair enough. She having not dated since, this is continuing the sentence, and who is still not ready to. Yeah. How does sentence construction? Subject, verb. Yes. However. Sometimes a conjugate. Something goes awry with her December 23rd Sacramento to Seattle plane reservation. In case you'd forgotten the geography, she currently lives in Sacramento. But she's going to Seattle to be with her recently widowed mother, where Sally Harrison. This is turning to hand the direction of like the Airbnb episode we did. <laughs> like, overly sus- specific on their travel plans. It's, it's so unnecessary <laughs> to the understanding of the story. <laughs> I just can't imagine the person sitting down to write well, this. This is like game. a Groundhog Day where she keeps coming back to December 23rd. I guess. Rather than deal with the airline bureaucracy, she reluctantly accepts the offer of someone else to share what is the last rental car at the Sacramento airport, which is the town she currently lives in, mm-hmm. as he too needs to get to Seattle, which is the town where Sally Harrison, her recently widowed mother, lives tomorrow. Okay. He is house painter Dash Sutherland. Can he paint her crafts? Unless they're edible. No, he paint paints those. houses. That's what he does. <laughs> That's who he is. His brushes are way too big for her. <laughs> we assume tiny crafts, but we don't know because they didn't deign to give us that detail. It could be chairs. It could be tables. It could be sandwiches, like I said. We don't know. How does she ship them? From Sacramento, where she currently lives. I was presumably, she... Does she use UPS or FedEx, bro? Really? Probably she uses the planes. Because this is, like, the first time she's frustrated with the bureaucracy. Because <laughs> Christmas. Almost Christmas. Not there again. <laughs> <laughs> they quickly find that they are like oil and water as they embark. So she's on well, top. On their two-day driving trip. on top. Oh, that's fair. Uh, by the way, it said he needs to get there by tomorrow, and it is a two-day driving trip, so y'all both about to be disappointed. I mean, he probably called in and was like, look, I can't get there. The plane's not working. I'm going to drive up there. It's going to take about two days. They quickly like, he needs f- to be there, but he can't, so it's yeah, sucks, but. And while Ashley is like an open book about her life to Dash. Is she? What does she make? Everything but that she's going to tell. I make crafts. What are they? I make crafts. <laughs> it's here's what it is. I paint houses. And they're like <laughs> tiny figurines, but they're made out of pot. <laughs> so she can't tell anybody. <laughs> but the people who take them from her do in fact eat them instead of appreciating them in their homes. Uh, Dash offers little about himself to her in return. Yeah, because he's a stranger who's just offering her a ride in her car and he's being punished by, like, the most talkative woman ever. (laughs) As they go on their trip, Ashley is unaware that the problem with her airline ticket was due to she being placed on the no-fly list as FBI agent Sam Monroe, who is the lead on her file, is certain she is a homegrown radicalized terrorist. That's what you get when you start shipping out mysterious crafts across the country <laughs> and refuse to tell anybody what's inside them. Who, which FBI agent do you think is the lead on your file, Brantley? I hope it's Agent Sam Monroe for me. Yeah. He sounds cool. It's such a weird thing to just offhandedly mention, like, oh, by the, by the way, way, the, the reason- FBI is investigating her for no apparent reason. I feel like she would have asked more about her ticket being denied, but I feel like it's in the rush, and guy's like, look, Maya was denied, too. Is he being investigated by the FBI? 
<laughs> That's a good question. Is that why he's so quiet about his past? He's He is a homegrown radicalized terrorist. <laughs> That's why he had to get there in one day. <laughs> Novice Agent Phelps, out of the Reading office, where he currently lives, mm-hmm. is a last-minute assignment to follow Ashley and Dash to watch her movements. Bumbling Phelps' actions... In addition to a love-struck teenage coffee shop employee named Travis, add to complications in Ashley and Dash's trip. There's a lot here at the very end that's like, wait, what? I feel like we need to take a pause for a second. We spent so much time on, like, where she lives and what's up with her mom, and all of a sudden you're going to be like, there's this one agent who thinks that she's bad, and then he assigned this other guy, but that guy's not good at his job. But anyway, there's also this barista, and the movie so ends. So one, he's a bumbling FBI agent, which, you know... Why? Say what you will about the FBI, but they're pretty good about determining who they allow in this, the agency. Uh, but, you know, Hallmark comedy movie, kind of. Moving on. He's so bad at his job at following someone that his actions are interrupting the trip of the people he's following. Yeah, that's tough. Is he just like every time they start leaving town, he panics and calls freaking road stops? <laughs> he like speeds up after them and gets in a wreck in front of them. And they stop to help him. And he's like, oh, thanks, folks. Wow, there's a lot of bad <laughs> hombres out the, there right what, now. He's still driving the one car. <laughs> he just gets more and more destroyed during the cross of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, Sir, would you like to ride with us? Like, no, 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 no. I don't I'm, trust strangers. I'm good. <laughs> What do you think? And then there's a love struck teenager. Coffee shop employee teenager named Travis. Travis. Yes. He's love struck with the bumbling guy? No. With Phelps? It would seem not on the Hallmark channel. He just like walked in and like normally he's just like a disheveled dude, but he just like came in from one of the wrecks. He's got like, you know, like a little bit. He's got that band aid so it looks like rugged and tough. Oh, yeah. He's, he's like, like half oh. his sleeve is burned off and Travis is like, oh, man. I, and he's just like, I just need a coffee, man. It's like, this guy's so cool and tough. He's like that. And he just wants coffee. He goes, he starts following him, <laughs> has the same problem. <laughs> <sighs> Meanwhile, he's just like, I just want to get to Seattle, man. I should not have invited you. <laughs> through it all. my life. Through it all, Ashley and Dash may discover that the other will change the nature of their Christmas holidays. Because they're going to prison. <laughs> Dash, specifically with regard to the real reason he needs to go to Seattle. Because he's a terrorist. <laughs> he has he's been the only one buying all of her crafts though this whole time he's See, been, he's been he has bu- shell companies he's been buying the them and then putting the like contraband within them to send them away because we don't know how big these crafts are because we don't know what they are she makes novelty fake bombs that he turns into real, real bombs, bombs. <laughs> <laughs> she just helps cosplayers across the country and he's like and it's a loop now Oh, wow, they've bought 35 fat boys since the, I put them on the market. They must be a great seller. And this guy's like, man, I'm going to run out of plutonium real soon here. <laughs> he needs to slow down. Hmm. So what's going on with her mom, though? Is she doing okay during this trip? I don't know. But we do know her name and where she I'd, lives, okay, so we no, can call okay, her I'm up and make check up, on her. I'm going to make up the B-plot of this movie. Okay. So Monroe sends Phelps to follow them. Right, right. right? Because... He's going to cut them off. He goes to Seattle. And where he goes, he's going to romance Sally, the he mother? he runs into Sally. Is just trying to investigate subtly, but they start having the actual Hallmark movie <laughs> off screen. <laughs> and so when they get there, they're baking cookies together. <laughs> I do love the fact that this woman who's in your version of this has been married for however long it took to produce. What's her face? I forgot her name all of a sudden. Ashley. Ashley. Right? They've been married for this long, and she's recently widowed. She's ready to get right back in the game. She's not dating. She just appreciates the company because this is her first Christmas alone, so that's why her daughter was coming. Who's late because she make her flights? So she's like, I'm happy to have someone over. And they just start bonding because he's good at talking to people, I guess, because he's an FBI agent. That that tracks. We've turned this into a much better movie, I think. (laughs) Meanwhile, the actual plot happens. It's just like this dude causing Rex every five miles. Well, that's going to do it for this week, folks. Thank you so much for listening. If you like this, uh, you know, tell a friend about it. Tell us about it if you enjoyed it. 
And we will see you guys next week with another episode of Two Weird Didn't Watch. Bye, Merry guys. Christmas. <laughs>